About 80% of childhood um, cancers occur in children that aren't in developed countries. So there is a significant burden of disease for patients um, in resource poor countries. And these patients at the moment aren't able to access health care and receive health care in the way that we would expect members of our own family to receive health care. One of the big concerns that um, families have is, is the belief that cancer isn't curable and I think that is very true for Bangladesh but certainly one of the things added to that is the cost of accessing that health care. So families may come to resource, uh, sorry, come to units to try it and work out what is wrong with their child and then receive that devastating news that their child has cancer and then be told how much it would cost to treat that child and then be told what the chance of cure is likely from that treatment. And, and for a family that, that doesn't have money, they are unlikely to be able to afford that treatment and so abandonment is high. Um, it, the cost is not the only reason for abandonment, but it is certainly a significant contribution. The aims of the, the project are quite simple really, is in to improve overall survival for children with cancer in Bangladesh and to improve the quality of palliative care that's offered. And I say that, that it's quite simple, clearly there's um, complexities around how to provide that, but those are the aims. The local team are highly motivated, very enthusiastic and a very dedicated team um, and they're led by um, Professor Afkal Islam um, and he's arranged a rally on the 4th um, to coincide with um, Camp World Cancer Day to raise awareness amongst parents and families and to help get the message across that childhood cancer does exist and it can be curable. Um, so they're working really hard within the community to raise that message and going to have a rally to try and take the message further out within the communities. I think the twinning partnership is based on a foundation of respect and um, it's a way to work quite respectfully with, um, with local and um, societal health systems in a way that's very empowering um, and also respectful of local knowledge and expertise and so it's, it's built on a foundation and a, a premise of sustainability um, and we, we may have some expertise in particular areas but we also recognise the, the expertise and, and the strengths and capabilities of people in, in, in the local field as well. So the workshop was a three-day programme um, and the, the team locally in Dakar helped contribute to that programme agenda and, and prior to going out there we asked the team um, what issues or what challenges they have that they would like um, some education and focus training on. So even before we went out there it felt quite a collaborative venture which was, which was really positive. Following the workshop um, we've had some really good evaluation but the, the best thing is that um, two nurses in particular have become the voice of the team and they've been emailing me on a regular basis just to ask general questions or queries and so what we can now see evolving is for our team here to develop perhaps some e-learning programs and packages and to develop some ongoing teaching that can be delivered locally by those two leads on the ward um, so that we move away from what was perhaps initially conceived as to be an annual workshop to something that's a, an ongoing kind of um, programme of learning. To have the opportunity to go to somewhere like Bangladesh as a nurse is, is energising because it really challenges you to draw on your expertise and your knowledge and to translate that into a different setting. And it allows for a lot of personal development and growth and I think that's attractive to a lot of, lot of nurses. And I think we work in a, in a, in a, in a way, particularly in a cancer setting, that's quite um, protocolised here in the UK and to then shake things up if you like and, and to place ourselves in a very different context draws on our draws on that knowledge but it it, it, it challenges us to to think quite differently and, and I think in turn that then has a really helpful use to inform our practice back home in the UK. I think it would be a fantastic opportunity for people that haven't worked outside of the NHS to understand the health economics 
um, of the choices that we make when we have resources and the choices that we make when we don't have resources. And, and clearly they're very different. Um, we're fortunate that we can offer equity of access for everyone and we can offer treatment to everyone that we would choose to be um, in everyone's best interests. Resource poor countries don't have the luxury of that and they really do have to prioritise those that um, they, they can help um, and those that can't be helped it's a much more difficult equation to think about how you're going to look after them.